Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up some triggers in Asymmetry so that you can change between different textures so that you can change the look and appearances of your materials in real time. All right, so here we have sort of a Cyberpunk Colosseum style virtual set, which will be available for download at my uh, Patreon. It will include all the blueprints and the textures and all that. All right, so let's pretend this whole thing is set up for a eSports virtual event. As you can see, there are five teams on the left and five teams on the right and they're about to compete and one by one each team will get eliminated until you're left with one team which will be the winner so uh, let's pretend for example here that you can see the five teams on the led and let's pretend like the raging bull team two will get eliminated first and boom you can see the image has changed it is now a monochrome black and white image, you know, indicating that the team has been eliminated. And for example, let's go another team will get eliminated. Boom, Lonely Dogs, gone. Scare Bear, gone. Stray Cats, gone. And I can do the same thing with the teams on the other side. You know, here goes the Panther Noir, Bell Rams. And as you can see on the right side here, I'm actually just pressing uh, triggers. And I could, you know, turn them back on again, like, oops. Panther Noir apparently didn't get eliminated. I'm gonna turn them back on again. And, you know, all I'm doing is actually just switching between uh, a set of textures which has color and another set of texture which is just black and white. So uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to set that up right now. So the first thing that I wanna do is prepare my texture. And as you can see, I have a single texture here which has been divided into a four by four uh, grid. So I've divided the image into four columns and four rows. And yes, I have some segments down there which are empty. It's fine. Sometimes you're going to be tempted to like, okay, I have only like 10 images. So maybe I just want to make a two by five. Uh, I don't recommend doing that. I always recommend keeping it even between the columns and the uh, rows like two by two or uh, four by four or five by five. This will make your life easier as you're preparing the materials in Unreal Engine. It will be easier for you to separate the parts and slice up uh, your texture into single images. And of course, each of these uh, segments is already the same uh, ratio as my LED display. So that's also important. And uh, your texture doesn't have to be even in ratio, as in it doesn't have to be like 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. Uh, it doesn't matter if your width is different from your height as long as it is divisible by the same amount. So as you can see here, my uh, width is a lot shorter than my height. The heights are has, has more pixels, but they are both uh, equally divisible by four, which is fine. So this is the texture for uh, the teams when they're alive. This is team color and all I did was save another PNG with a black and white uh, filter which removes all the color. So that's it. First image, teams are alive. Second image, second texture, team are uh, dead. That's it. All right, so here we are in Unreal Engine and I have imported my two textures that we just made, the color version and the black and white versions. And now what we need to do is to create a master material. And I only need to do this with one of the textures team color. I'm going to do it with team color uh, because actually later on, we're not going to be switching between materials. So what we're going to be switching between is only the textures. So we don't really need to create a material for the black and white version. All right. So here is the master material all set up using the uh, colored uh, texture. And if you're like, whoa, 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 why is it all set up? Aren't you going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on it? Well, uh, I got all this from uh, Ryan Lally and you know, if you're familiar with Unreal Engine, you definitely probably know who he is already. And if you want to learn how to set this up, I will link uh, the link to his video and you can watch a step by step on how to set this up. Uh, but for now, this is all set up. And the important thing is that here in the texture node, uh, just make sure you remember what you name your texture node. It's called texture here. And because that's important because we want to be able to switch uh, the texture later on. So that's the only thing that I need you to keep in mind right now. All right, so once you're done creating your master material, now I'm going to make material instances for each of these uh, LEDs. So as you can see here, I have a material instance for team one, team two, team three, and all that. It's starting from zero. 
because uh, the index is starting from zero, so zero to nine. But yes, I have uh, 10 teams and each of these LEDs is using one of these materials. All right, so if we peek inside each of these material instances, you will see that the only different is that they're using different team number here in the global scalar parameter value. For example, here team 001 is using team number one and material instance team two is using team number two. Uh, again, uh, you would know how to set this up if you watch Ryan Lally's video on how to manipulate UVs. Now, if you notice, each of these material instances have here the global texture parameter value. This is all using the same uh, texture. It's just that the uh, coordinates are different, which is why each of these material instances have uh, different images. But at the source, it's using the same texture. So now, I'm going to show you guys how to set up the blueprint so that we can trigger uh, the material to use a different texture. All right, so let's take a look at my entire level for a second. As you will notice, I have all my 3D assets in one single blueprint. If you see everything that's inside my level, I have my axisymmetry camera, I have my BP underscore stadium, which is my set, and I just have some lights on top of that. So everything is happening within this one single blueprint. So let's check out what's inside. So inside I have all my uh, meshes, my 3D assets. As you can see here, so many different parts. And I can select here each of the individual screens. So let's see what's going on in the event graph. Boom. So the first part here is everything that I need for my monitor input. So this monitor here in the center, because you know I want to be able to uh, input a video source in it later on in Symmetry. I have a video dedicated on that if you want to know how to set it up. So let's zoom out a bit. And as you can see here, I have a bunch of spaghetti. But actually, if we skip this monitor input, it's actually just dragging out of the event begin play execution order. And here I have a sequence. And out of the sequence, I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 0 to 9, that's uh, 10 uh, different execution uh, orders in sequence. And this is what is going to set up each trigger so that we are able uh, to switch between the textures for each team. So let's focus on one setup because this is actually like pretty much uh, repeated uh, 10 times. I'm gonna focus on just one setup over here. So first sequence here, uh, bind event to trigger. Here I have a get axiometry trigger and I have named it team one. So this is the uh, input pin that's going to show up in uh, axiometry, uh, which I can, you know, hook up to my dashboard and I'll be able to press the button. Um, so what's the button going to do? It's going to trigger a custom event, uh, which is a flip-flop. It means that if I press it once, it's gonna trigger A. If I press it a second time, it's going to trigger B. So what is it doing? It's going to uh, set the texture parameter value, but before it can do that, it needs to know uh, which object, which mesh it wants to change. So here I have a stadium, Unreal A, Team A here, and I'm just gonna delete this. So here, viewport, I wanna set up for this screen right here. It's gonna highlight on the left side, and I can just drag this in here. So this is the 3D mesh, which we want to change the texture, but we're not uh, you know, changing the material, we're changing the texture. Which means we need to tell it first which material we want the texture of to be changed. Excuse my English, it's horrible, I know. Uh, okay, so this is the mesh and this is the material. So if I select here, this first LED here, it's using the material called MI, Material Instance Team 00, and Index Element 0. So it is correct. Here I set it to a team 001, material index zero. So now it knows uh, that we, that is the material that we want to change. Not that there are other materials. It is the only material available anyway, but still we need to uh, tell it which material to change. And so now we know which material to change. And now we can say, okay, well, when I press it one time, A, it's going to set the texture parameter and we have to specify that it's called texture 
That's why we named the parameter texture in the material instances. And here, it's going to change it to what? What texture do you want to change it to? So here, I have put uh, Team Death. Team Death. So the reason why uh, in A, I changed it to Team Death and not Team Color first, because the uh, the default is using Team Color. So I wanted that as soon as you press it, it changed to Team Death, which means it's going to lose its color. It's going to change to the textures as black and white. And, you know, the team is going to be eliminated. And if we press it a second time, so flip-flop B, we press the trigger a second time, it's going to change it to Team Color, which means if you press the trigger again, it's going to change the texture back to the texture of its color. And now the team is alive again. So this is how you set it up. And, you know, just copy paste it 10 times and you know make sure each of the static meshes it's you know uh, for the second one make sure you have this one selected and you drag this one into the event graph and make sure that the uh, here the team name uh, the team material the team name is correct you know if you have two of the pins which are using the same name you're gonna get some problems if you say team one team one team one you're gonna press the same trigger and it's gonna trigger different uh, you know, objects at the same time. So make sure the team names are different and make sure the material is the correct material for that static mesh. So here I have the this one selected, second one, and it's called uh, material is team01. You got to make sure this says team01. And you know, everything else is uh, the same. So repeat this 10 times and boom you have a trigger for each different team. And that's it. That's how you set it up. And all we have to do is cook content for Eximetry D. So now when you bring in your project into Eximetry, you will see that you will have these 10 input purple pins, which you can connect to your uh, dashboard. It will show up here. And now all you need to do is press the trigger and it will change the texture of the material. And the best part is, you know, you can, you know, hook this up to your Stream Deck or to a MIDI controller. So uh, your operator can, you know, just like press the shortcuts on the MIDI controller. It's super fun to do. But if you're thinking like, wow, that seems complicated. What if you have 30 teams and 40 teams? And can this be like just automated? Well, it can, you know, if you can pull like um, the API from the game you're playing and you have, for example, a one equals you're alive and zero means that your team is dead, you could pull that data in an SQL database and then pull from the database into asymmetry and you can prepare your blueprints that it says, okay, if, you know, if zero, then use texture A and if one, use texture B. So this could all be automated, but that is a topic that I will be discussing in a future video. So uh, I hope this information was useful. Um, of course, so many different scenarios, you could uh, use this uh, flow. And uh, if you guys want to request anything, hit me in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.